For most people, the kitchen is the heart of any home, and property owners are typically willing to spend a fortune to make it a feature of pride. But what happens when instead of improving it, contractors take your money and leave you with an incomplete kitchen? Thousands of South African homes are transformed with home renovations worth millions of rands every year, with kitchens being the most expensive part of the makeover. It's an investment, the realization of a long-term dream. But what many people don't realize is you get what you pay for, and this could turn into a nightmare. Stephanie Forbes is from the Kitchen Specialists Association, or KSA. Anybody who knows the difference between a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver can start a kitchen company. We don't have qualifications um, or regulations. She says kitchen companies that reel in deals with impressive and exaggerated sales pitches are a dime a dozen. Our factory is geared for, call it 500 uh, a month. We, we do about between 8 and 16 installations per day. These three homeowners were impressed by their initial dealings with the kitchen factory in the south of Johannesburg and chose them to do the job. They were the lowest and they had the nice design. They said they could build the units within three days. They were manufacturers, suppliers and not just, you know, the retailers. But the reality is, because the industry is unregulated, many companies overpromise and often underdeliver, if at all. The KSA is a voluntary organization. Its members choose to be held accountable by a panel of their peers. But when you're dealing with a non-member, consumers have very little recourse. But other than going to the office of the consumer protector, there's not much else they can do other than coming to you, the media. If you're not a member, we don't have a legal jurisdiction to make any call or hold you accountable for your workmanship. Brian Gomez is the man behind the kitchen factory. They've been in the business for decades but are not registered with the KSA. Why aren't you registered with the KSA? We've just never registered. I've never had it in all the years. So, you know, like I said, these are three unhappy clients. I can put you on to a thousand happy clients. On the face of it, this kitchen looks amazing. It looks modern, it looks expensive, but at 70,000 Rand just for the cupboards, here's something I want to show you. Looks can be very deceiving. Lawrence De Rosario is not one of the many happy clients. He dealt with the kitchen factory in July 2016. They quoted close to 71,000 rands for just the cupboards. He says the workmanship was simply not up to scratch. The first time we opened it, um, ball bearings came out all over the floor. How many doors have fallen off? Um, only two so far, but there's a few that I think will come fall off soon. A lot of what a good kitchen is, you can't see. It's the quality of board that's used for the carcassing, the, carpet, the quality of the hinges and the runners. Those are the things that give you the 5, 10 year, 15 year longevity of your kitchen. We'd be lucky if it, this one, as it stands, will last five years. Well, I've got plenty of kitchens that have been standing for 20 years. So. <laughs> Stephanie pointed out that this installation itself is poor and that it's only a matter of time before the oven comes crashing down. Basically, all they've got is the chipboard carcasses. And even those are not the best quality. You can see that the hinges haven't been installed properly. Lucien Pierce is a consumer protection law expert. He says consumers are not without rights. You're entitled to expect a reasonable product, something that is an industry standard. So if somebody is installing something where the hinges don't work, or the countertops are skew, or the material that you originally ordered is not fit for purpose, then he hasn't delivered what you ordered. Sean van der Bert dealt with the kitchen factory between 2015 and 2016. He was quoted just over 66,000 rands for the kitchen, including tops and materials. With issues around installation and quality, the relationship broke down between Sean and the kitchen factory after heated arguments. That Sean guy, really, at the end of the day, he came to a point where I said, Sean, we obviously can't please you. At this stage, Sean had already paid 90% of the total, but had yet to receive most of the materials. Even if the fact that I am fussy, that's not a reason to not supply the materials that you paid for in the first place, which, is, which exceeds 40% of the value that you've already committed. That's theft. He says you still got his stuff. So what, no. if, what if his stuff he do came, you have? He came and loaded a bucky load of stuff with police in my factory and they just started loading. But Brian was of the opinion that Sean was the thief. So you're saying everything that you needed to give him, you've given him plus more? 
He's got other, other client stuff, yeah? But Sean and Jean, the contractor who finished the cupboard installation, have a different version. What happened, we didn't load it ourselves. Um, the workers at the, at the factory, they loaded all the stuff onto the bucket and everything fitted the, the kitchen as, as it should have. While he eventually got his cupboards, Sean says he never received the worktops, double sink, prep bowl, dustbin and door handles. The worktops alone cost over 19,000 rands. Did you deliver tops? No. Was tops part of the deal? Yes. So where's the tops? Well, we haven't installed tops because everything just fell apart at that point. But what recourse does Sean have? Well, because he's not a member of any particular industry association, the only route that, that they have to protect their rights would be to proceed uh, and go to the National Consumer Commission. But even then, the company in question will only be issued a fine. If they have incurred damages or they've had to spend money getting somebody else to do the job and it ultimately costs them a lot more, then of course they can go against uh, him in the civil court. After numerous attempts to get a refund, Sean took the matter to the small claims court. The judgment was in his favor. Brian has not paid back the money and plans to challenge the ruling. He insists these cases are only one or two percent of his clientele base and that he has many happy clients. To be fair, we called one of Brian's bigger clients, property developer Tony Panero. Brian has done work for him since 2013. And have you had any comebacks on any of the work that he's done? Nothing, nothing I haven't really had a problem, no. Brian sent us a list of many more happy developers and private clients. We called several of them who confirmed this. This is great. It's fantastic. This is the best aspect of the renovation in terms of service. But it seems that some clients don't share this view. Stephanie says complaints are not uncommon in the kitchen industry. Do you get lots of complaints? It's growing. Since the advent of the Consumer Protection Act, we've seen a massive increase. What kinds of complaints? People looking to cut corners cost-wise, and uh, sometimes it's just people being unreasonable, whether it be the kitchen company or the client. Brian blamed Lawrence for problems with the installation of the kitchen, saying he designed his own kitchen based on UK expectations. And if anything was incorrect, it was because of Lawrence's own measurements. We made it according to his dimensions. If someone buys cupboards from me and says he wants a floor 1200 and a 1500, I can't go to his site you know, and measure his job. However, an email from Brian to Lawrence seems to contradict this. He stated that they will come measure up. Lawrence confirms they did, but without the plans. Well, Mr. Gomez is not a very honorable man. He saw me as a woman and thought that he can take advantage. Nonklantla Ranepe dealt with the kitchen factory end 2012-2013. She has subsequently sold that house. The original quote was for 161,000 rands and included a new kitchen, built-in cupboards and a bathroom vanity. She paid a 50% deposit in December with the undertaking that the job would start in the new year. I was promised two weeks and it took up more than four weeks to complete. You can imagine my frustration now to say I've already paid him and now I'm worried about my money. It's sitting with him, now I have to beg him. Just like Lawrence and Sean, Nonklantla was equally unhappy with her kitchen fitment. The eye level does not fit, it's hanging outside. The pantry door is also uh, dragging uh, on, on, on the floor, the broken tiles. Uh, the cabinet had your pigeon holes. The pigeon holes were not symmetric. You know, they were, not, they were not proper. Have you had issues with the installations themselves? Of course, yeah. What kinds of issues? Where the guys don't install the cupboards correctly and then we have to fix it. And then it becomes a snag and then we fix the snag and it's done. But that didn't happen with these three clients. They say Brian avoided contact when they started getting upset about delays and shoddy workmanship. But he basically said to me that they weren't going to do any more work um, and I should keep the 10% and get someone else to finish the job. Stephanie says this is a common occurrence in the industry with unregistered operators. They have made their money. They can walk away scot-free and they haven't made a loss on the job. But these clients will have to cough up a lot more than the outstanding 10% to fix and finish the work. Lawrence is in for another 20,000 plus. While Brian credited Nonklantla for some materials, she had to get a carpenter and a plumber to finish, forking out an additional 12,000 rands in labor. 
Sean has spent another 27,000 rands and has 10 more to go. He says he's learned his lesson. Find a company, a reputable company that belongs perhaps to the Kitchen Specialist Association um, and pay that extra bit. Don't, don't hesitate in terms of thinking, well, I'm going to save a few thousand rand here and there.